Hello. In the previous videos, you have been introduced to a bunch of important forces, like the reaction force, gravity, the normal force, friction, spring force, and tension force. In this video, we are going to work out a complicated force problem that involves some combination of these different forces. The goal is to show you, step by step, how to take these complicated problems and break them down into simple components that you can solve. So, when watching this video, pay attention to the method I use to solve the problems and not just the problem itself. So let's get started. We are going to deal with the bosun's chair. This kind of contraption is pretty common in real life. Something like it is used on boats, in construction, and even in rock climbing. The idea is that a person sits in this chair, which is attached by a cable to a pulley, which is fixed in place. He then holds onto the cord on the other side of the pulley. If he pulls downward on that cord, he moves up, or stays in place. But if he loosens his grip, he will slip downwards. With this contraption, a person can lift themselves to a great height. So let's analyze this situation with physics. Let's say we had a simple question. How much downward force does the person sitting in the chair need to exert on the cord in order to maintain a constant velocity? That means that we want the net acceleration to be zero. That velocity could be zero, in which case we're asking how much force is needed to keep him in the same position. Or it could be an upward velocity, in which case we're asking how much force needs to be exerted constantly in order to rise to the top. To make the analysis a bit less confusing, let's start by saying that the rope on the other side of the pulley has little mass m, and the person plus the chair have a mass of big M. At the end, we will return to our usual assumption that the mass of the rope is zero, but let's wait on that, because it might be a bit confusing to know how to apply forces to a massless object. The very first step is to draw our own simplified diagram of the situation. This diagram will be our force diagram, or free body diagram. They're basically the same thing. So I will draw the person in the chair as just a rectangle with a big M on it, because we don't care what it looks like for the purpose of working out all the forces. We will draw a string and a pulley, because that will help us remember to include the tension forces. And finally, we'll draw the mass of the rope on the right-hand side as just a box with a little M on it. Great, that's step one. We turned our situation into a simple diagram. Now for step two. Think about all the forces that act on each object and draw them. We will draw the forces as an arrow that shows the direction and a magnitude near the arrow somewhere to show how strong the force is. So let's start with one force that we know is happening. The person is pushing down on the right hand side of the rope with some pushing force. So let's draw that force as a downward arrow applied to the little m, which represents the rope on the other side. And we'll call that force F push. Now because of action reaction, if the person applies a downward force on the little m, then the little m will apply an upward force on the person. So we have to draw an upward arrow acting on the big M box with the same magnitude of F push. Next, that downward force on little m might cause the rope to stretch. So to counter that, there may be a tension force that acts upward on little m. We don't yet know what it is, but for now we will just give it a magnitude of T. As usual with tension, the tension in one end of the string is transmitted to the other end of the string. So we have a tension force pointing upward here as well. Finally, we have to consider the gravity forces. So we have big M times G pulling downward here, and we have little m times G pulling downward here. Great, we have now diagrammed all the forces involved. The next step is to choose what our directions of interest should be. The default choice is simply to make positive X horizontal to the right and positive Y vertical upwards. However, in a problem like this, where the objects are set to move only along a certain path, which is the path of the pulley in this case, it is better to choose a direction along this path. So we will draw a little curve that resembles the path of the pulley. And we have to label one end to be positive and the other to be negative. This way we've established which direction we consider to be positive. You see which one I chose to be positive, but you could absolutely do the opposite, so long as you are consistent. I chose it this way because I want the person moving upwards to be positive. Now, the next step is to set up the equations using F equals MA. Let's start with the person, the big M we have that big M times A equals the sum of forces. I'll start with all the positive forces, which are those that act upward. We have F push, and we have tension. Now the only remaining force is gravity, which acts downward, so it's negative, so we put minus mg into the equation. Now for the rope. We have little m times A equals the sum of forces. Again, let's start with those positive terms, which in this case is any force that acts downward. 
So we have the F push plus little m times g. Tension acts upwards, so it's negative. So we put minus t into the equation. At this point, I would suggest we go back to our assumption that little m, the mass of the rope, is so small that we can treat it as zero. In that case, the rope equation becomes simpler. From here, we can find that the tension force equals F push. Great, we have pretty much worked out all the physics. We have set up all the equations, and the next step is just to solve for whatever we asked for, which is just algebra. To remind you, we wanted to know what value of F push was required to make the acceleration equal to zero. We have our equation here, where we can replace T for F push. We can also set A equal to zero, since that is the condition we are asking about, so we get this. Next, we just solve for F push, and we find that F push equals the person's weight, divided by two. That's pretty cool if you think about it. This contraption allows a person to hold himself up, or lift himself up, by applying half the force that would normally be necessary to do so. So whenever you need to solve a force problem, use these steps as a guide for what you need to do. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.